Don Dele sighed as he sat in the middle of his classroom, a plain wooden room full of desks and other students his own age, both boys and girls. There were a couple windows off to one side, letting in the fresh air of the spring day and almost distracting him from the work he had in front of him. Of course, that test was very special and important, because Don knew that if he could pass it, it would be the last test he needed to complete before he graduated. He'd already mastered all the other standard subjects taught at his school, language, physics, geography, social ethics, and so forth, and math was all that was left. Once he finished it, he reminded himself with a smile he could start training for the job of his choice. However, although Don tried hard to focus on the test in front of him and the thin parchment that he was being asked to write on, his thoughts continuously drifted out of his control, seizing upon his deepest worries about his own future and his fear that he might never be able to fulfill his dreams. Don really only wanted to do one thing with his life, and he was afraid that he wouldn't even get the chance to work towards that one dream. However, Don had barely even filled in the last answer on the test when he heard the sound of church bells ringing from outside the walls of his school. It wasn't just the central bell, or even the two primary ones like on Sundays. All five bells were ringing, and Don knew what that meant. It was the alarm, the call to action for the guards, the signal for Troma's Jera Master to summon the knights, and a warning for everyone else to get indoors, preferably into a basement or safe house until the crisis was over. The alarm meant that the enemy was approaching the town of Troma. Quickly, Don dropped his parchment and the quill he'd been writing with, then ran away from the class, out through the small classroom door and into the long hallway beyond, which was made of wood and brick, heading towards the pair of large double doors at the far end. That was the exit of the school, and it was where he wanted to go, no matter what everyone else was doing. Of course, the teachers were encouraging everyone to follow them and stay close, but Don knew where they were headed. The teachers were trying to take everyone to the safe houses, and Don didn't want to get stuck in one of those underground structures while the knights were outside fighting for the people of Troma. Just as he was about to run off, away from the school, however, Don could tell that his flight from security wasn't going to be that easy. Three of his classmates were following him towards the school's front doors, and he recognized them all. They were, he realized, his best friends, and the people most likely to understand why he wanted to watch the night's battle. The first was Sharon, the only girl who'd ever taken an interest in Don's life, probably because he seemed pretty sad a lot of the time, and she'd wanted to comfort him. That was the reason why they'd first started talking, and it was the first thing that they ever talked about, his worries over his future, and what he was going to do when he got older. Sharon had the kind of smile that helped others feel better when they were trying to relax or cope with some difficulty in their lives, and she was really a lot more considerate than she needed to be, which was probably the only reason why she and Don had gotten along. The second of the kids following Don was Neil. He was a black-haired young boy, about a year younger than Don, who looked up to him because of what Don planned to do with his life. For some reason, Neil seemed to find Don's ambitions and determination inspiring, so he'd started following Don around, and in the end, they'd become pretty good friends. The last of the students following Don was a boy of about Don's age named Vince. Like him, he had red hair, and although he didn't share Don's dream or even understand it, Vince was probably his best friend. The two got into arguments a lot, but they hardly ever hurt each other's feelings, and really they enjoyed those little debates quite a bit. They were both spirited debaters, though they often disagreed, and that was the biggest reason why the two had been able to develop such a lasting friendship. Don knew that a battle between the knights and the approaching enemy would begin in minutes, so he didn't like having to waste time explaining himself, even to his best friends, but he knew enough about them all by that point to realize that there wasn't any alternative. He couldn't go to watch the fight if they were following him, and he couldn't get them to stop following him without some kind of explanation. Don? Sharon asked as soon as the three had caught up to him. What are you doing? We have to get to the safe house. I'm not going into any safe house, Don replied, letting a little bit of irritation show as he spoke to his friends. This is the only chance I've got to watch the knights work. I have to see what they do. Don't you even realize how dangerous? Sharon tried to ask, but Don interrupted her at once, starting to get a little angry, though more with the situation than with her. Yeah, I know, Don replied. It's really dangerous to be a knight or to even try to be one, I know, but that's what I want, so if you want to get to a safe house, you go ahead, I'm not going. Then, without another word, Don started off across town, towards the northeast where the alarm had been sent from, and he didn't look back anymore. He liked his friends, and he cared about them a lot, but he couldn't give up on his dream, not even for them. He wasn't very old yet, barely past his tenth birthday, but Don DeLay had already decided what he wanted to do with the rest of his life.